Okay, so this is the actual Matisim lab, and just to save time, I put all the devices into this workplace. So if you want to know where I like this function generator is, uh, it's on the right, most right hand side. So the first one is a multimeter, the second one is a function generator. You can just pull that in, function generator, it's the same thing. Okay. So this is the same thing. Right. So I have that. Uh, I have this mark and the meters here. I don't know where I've got those strange numbers from, but anyway. Um, but there are meters here, and those meters are from up here. Uh, if you go down, like at the very top, it has Montesim symbol, file, fi and file open, and then place source, basic, like that. Uh, so it's one, two, three, four, throw. And then if you go like where you have the power uh, switch, we turn it on. And if you keep going across somewhere here, you see the it starts with ammeters and then it goes to voltmeters. Okay. Make sure that when you drop these voltmeters in here, that you change it to AC because I think it might be defaulting. So let me just drop that and see. See, it defaults to a DC, and this, since we are talking about AC, you need to change that to AC. So just change it to AC like that. Okay? If not, this thing won't work right. So, these devices, I think you should be able to do it without too much difficulty. So, the resistor is obviously stuff resistor is right here. And its basic components, this is electrolytic capacitor. If you look at the basic components, you will see capacitors right here, see right there. And then you want to do uh, one microfarad, right? And so the, remember, I said sometimes they draw it two straight lines. So this is that one. Probably wouldn't matter a whole lot, but just for this circuit. Just to, put, uh, to be on the safe side, put electrolytic capacitor like this. And then just put any one in, it doesn't matter. You can change it to the value you want afterwards. So if I just put that in here, okay, so I put that 2.2 microfarad. And all I have to do is to, to make it a 1 microfarad, just double click on it and just say 1. Yeah. and that will become one microfarad. Okay. Take that out. And inductors will be the same thing. If we just go here uh, uh, from basic components and just go to inductor right here. Uh, and then it comes up like that. Uh, with mo one millihenry, just double click on it and what do we need? Uh, 47 millihenry, right? So, okay. And then all I have to do is to connect the components together. So, that. That. Okay. Ah. Alright, now I'll connect the voltmeters. Right. That. So it connects to there, so it connects to there. Yeah. That. And let me turn the power on. So this is a meaningless number. We don't, we're not interested in this. We're supposed to start off at 734 hertz, right? That's a sub, uh, resonance frequency. So just click on the frequency and 734 and hertz. And I know I didn't specify voltage, but 10 volts peak is fine. It doesn't matter. All we are trying to do is to look at what the numbers will be. So at resonance, I get 7 volts across the resistor 
1.5 volts across the capacitor and 1.5 volts across the inductor. You notice that the voltage across the capacitor and inductor are the same and that's because at this resonance frequency X of C equals X of L. So the next one I'm supposed to do is 1.5 kilohertz, right? So change that to 1.5 and make that 1.5 kilohertz. And you notice how the voltage from 7 it went down to 6.9 volts. And I have 1.5 volts to begin with now. This voltage has dropped actually by about half and this one has increased to what, 3 volts. So you can see also that as you increase the frequency the resistance across this device gets higher and that's true right because it's a direct proportionality to frequency. So inductors will block high frequencies. Right. And you will also notice that capacitors have very low resistance to high frequencies. Right. So let me go to the other extreme which is 370 hertz. And now I get 6.7 volts. Remember I started off with 7 volts. And now the voltage across the capacitor has gone up. It was 0.7 volts. It's gone up to 2.8 volts. And now the voltage across the inductor has gone down. Which means inductors offer very low resistance to uh, low frequencies and capacitors offer high resistance to low frequencies. So capacitors offer high resistance to low frequencies and the opposite is true of these. So 370 hertz, get this, so uh, we do considerably higher frequency. You see that the voltage across this drop to zero and now the inductor is like an open switch almost get the source voltage dropped across it okay. and you have very little voltage across the load now remember the goal is to have the maximum voltage dropped across this device we're not interested in well we're interested in these two devices to tune this circuit to get the maximum maximum voltage dropped here not the voltage dropped across the inductor. Okay. And if I drop the uh, frequency, you see how this number became higher and this number became lower. This was, a, remember, a closed switch, an open switch just a minute ago. Now it has very low resistance. That's why this voltage is low. But this has become much higher the voltage here and I'm not dropping my source the maximum voltage dropped here so if I drop this a little bit more see I'm dropping this voltage some more and now this is the capacity is acting like an open switch see it's very high voltage across this one Okay. So almost the whole source voltage, remember this is a peak voltage and we are, these mesh, are measuring RMS voltages. So we are actually dropping the whole source voltage across this device right here and we have nothing dropped across here and this voltage is insignificant. And we'll go back to um, the resonance frequency which is what we are trying to do. 
Now you will notice that these two voltages are the lowest in com com combination versus this voltage has become the highest. So this is the goal to get the highest voltage dropped across here. And we are not interested in, you know, uh, the voltage, well, we are interested in these voltages, but the output is taken from here. So this will give you the maximum amplitude in the circuit at resonance frequency. So that others that you need to complete is like this. So the voltage across the resistor is this one. The voltage across the inductor is this one here. And the voltage across the capacitor is this one here. And at resonance frequency, which is this one right now, the voltage across the resistor will be so and something. Voltage across the inductor is 1.5 volts. Voltage across the capacitor is 1.5 volts. Okay. And this one, 1.5, uh, let me do the 370 while I'm doing this. At 370, which is this row here, if you divide the resonance frequency by one half, then this voltage across the resistor is 6.7 volts. Voltage across the inductor is 0.7 volts. And voltage across the capacitor is 2.8 volts, which is this one here. So your conclusion should be, you know, what happens when you drop this frequency? What happened to the voltages across these devices? And then let me go back to the, uh, if you double the, if you double the uh, resonance frequency, which is something close to 1.5 kilohertz, right? Then get these numbers, so you need to write these numbers. Okay. Also, your conclusion should be that that inductors offer more resistance to high frequencies, and capacitors offer low resistance to high frequencies. So, 0 0.7 volts here. This is almost like a closed switch. And, you know, just for the sake of argument, if I increase this much higher, you see this is acting like an open switch. This is an open switch right here. Right. I should get you going.